Buenos dias, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 5 on Learning. Now, we've got some key terms to go over in Part 1 of this lesson, and those include the definition of learning, classical conditioning in particular, the unconditioned stimulus, abbreviated as a US, the unconditioned response, abbreviated as a UR, the conditioned stimulus, abbreviated as CS, and the condition response, abbreviated as CR. Let's go. When you think of learning, what comes to mind? Maybe sitting in a classroom like these folks participating in a lecture discussion? Well, that qualifies. Maybe watching your math professor correctly do a problem. Well, that qualifies as well, no doubt about it. But for us psychologists, learning is much broader. We define it as a permanent change in behavior, knowledge, capability, or attitudes. This includes learning how to bake cookies, how to swim, even how to develop and maintain successful relationships with others. You and I rely heavily on learning because we don't have instincts in the way animals have instincts. This giraffe mother knows just what to do when her newborn has not started to breathe. She'll kick it and roll it over until the baby opens its mouth. The mother didn't learn this. She had no experiences to draw on. She's never seen others do it in the wild. She doesn't wonder, am I getting this right? She does what she does. It is all she can do, and at the same time, it is the only thing she can do because of instinct. Learning and making adaptive changes has been key to our survival as a human species. It allows us to live and work in extremes from the bottom of the ocean to outer space. No other animal has this flexibility and range. A great deal of who you and I are and what we do is a result of learning. There's several major ways in which you and I learn. In Chapter 5 in these lectures, I'm going to focus on two of these, classical conditioning and opera conditioning. Now, classical conditioning is what we're going to do in, in Part 1 and in Part 2, and then Part 3 and 4 will be opera conditioning. We define classical conditioning as when an organism, that's you and me, organisms, learn to associate one stimulus with another. The first research program on classical conditioning was carried out by a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov. Pavlov lived over 100 years ago, and he was studying digestion in dogs. He wanted to know how they salivated to food. Pavlov made surgical incisions in the cheeks of their mouths and collected spit in test tubes. How does food elicit a reflex of salivation, he wondered. And by the way, this is an actual image of one of Pavlov's dogs that was stuffed and preserved after death and now kept in a museum in Russia. A reflex always involves an unconditioned stimulus and an unconditioned response. For example, in this picture, an object placed in the baby's palm, like your finger, is an unconditioned stimulus, and it elicits an unconditioned response of what? Grasping. When the doctor taps you on the knee during an exam with a rubber mallet, yeah, that's what the unconditioned stimulus is, isn't it? And it elicits an unconditioned response of what? A knee jerk. We're all born this way. It is hardwired into our nervous systems. The reflex was not learned. So here is our first important term. The unconditioned stimulus is a stimulus that elicits a specific unconditioned response without learning. The next important term is the unconditioned response. The unconditioned response is a response elicited by an unconditioned stimulus without prior learning. Now I know this seems rather circular, 
but it will make sense the more we read and study. What was the unconditioned stimulus for the U.S. in Pavlov's work with dogs? It was food, wasn't it? What was the unconditioned response, or UR, in Pavlov's work with dogs? It was salivation. So Pavlov and his staff are working with the dogs using a setup like this. And by the way, it may look confining to the dog, but everything that I have ever read about Pavlov tells me that he loved the animals, he took great care of them, there was absolutely no pain or stress involved. And here's an image of the specially built laboratory made for Pavlov. So they're working with the dogs, but it did not take long, however, for problems to arise. When it was dinner time, the sound of Pavlov or his associates walking down the hall made the dogs salivate. The sight of dinner plates also triggered drooling. Now, these sights and sounds are not an unconditioned stimulus that elicit an unconditioned response to salivation, are they? This shouldn't be happening, or should it? The psychic secretion, as Pavlov labeled it, threatened his work, but as any good scientist, he was flexible and decided to shift gears and study just that. Pavlov reasoned that if a particular stimulus was present when the dog was fed, that stimulus would become associated with the food and cause salivation just on its own. This diagram represents Pavlov's famous procedure. Before conditioning, he would present food, which causes the unconditioned response to salivation. That's to be expected. No big surprise there, is it? Then, he would present a neutral stimulus in this diagram, blowing a whistle, and this would not cause salivation. Again, there's no reason to expect it would cause salivation because at this point, it's simply a neutral stimulus. Then, during conditioning, or what we call acquisition, you blow the whistle with the presentation of food and we get salivation. Now at this point, the dog is still salivating because of the presentation of food, but not the whistle. The pairing of the whistle followed by the food has to be done multiple times in acquisition. Then, after conditioning, we blow the whistle without presenting the food, and guess what happens? The dog salivates. Classical conditioning has occurred. So now we have two new terms, the condition stimulus and the condition response. First, the condition stimulus. The condition stimulus is a neutral stimulus, but after repeated pairing with an unconditioned stimulus, becomes associated with it and elicits a condition response. Now the condition response. The condition response is a learned response that comes to be elicited by the conditioned stimulus as a result of its pairing with the unconditioned stimulus. So pop quiz. What was the conditioned stimulus in Pavlov's research with dogs? In our example, the whistle, sometimes he used a metronome. And most famously, he rang a bell. That you'll hear this expression, Pavlov's dogs and Pavlov's bell. And when I'm discussing Pavlov and classical conditioning from here on out, I'll frequently say the bell as my example when referring to the conditioned stimulus. What was the conditioned response in Pavlov's research with dogs? Well, that would be salivation, wouldn't it? Well, this ends part one. We've defined learning, classical conditioning, the US, the UR, the CS, the CR. I know there's a whole lot of URs and CSs going on here. You'll have to read and study this some more, and we've got more 
upcoming in part two. So, see you then. Bye-bye.